on. Hey, Fusion Church, how are you doing today? Let's uh, go ahead and let's uh, welcome all of the different family members that are joining us in different rooms of the house here at Fusion Church. So the OG location, Summers Point, how are you doing? Come on, let's uh, put our hands and welcome Summers Point, Cumberland County. Come on, we are fired up that you are with us. And even we have a giant, listen to this, all of our other locations. We have so many people in Welcome Home at Cumberland County. We are doing a special vision night tonight at Cumberland County because we didn't have enough space for them. So we had to open up the gymnasium at Cumberland County Christian School to be able to hold that. So come on, let's put our hands together and let's celebrate all that God is doing over at Cumberland County and then Egg Harbor Township and online. How are you guys doing? It is multiple rooms of the house coming to worship the same Jesus, correct? The same Jesus that died on the cross, rose again. We celebrate that life and we want to grow in our discipleship with him, and we know that there are many people in different faith spectrums of their Christianity, and uh, really my prayer for you today is that we would take a step closer to being a true disciple of what Jesus is calling us to do. Boy, we many of us sang that worship song called God of Revival, and um, and I'm believing for revival in our region, amen? How many of us are believing for revival? And, uh, and so God is on the move, and let's pray. Lord, we pray right now for revival. We pray, God, as we step into this uh, series called All In, uh, you would speak to us clearly. We pray for the uh, cities and the counties that we serve. God, we pray for those of us that are online in other states today. God, that you would light us on fire. God, for your word, what the Holy Spirit's doing in our life. God, convict us of sin today. I know the junk in my life that I need to draw closer to your grace and your mercy. And so God, come, would you use your church, the bride of Christ, to be a reflection of your grace and your mercy in a really a crazy world that we're living in, God. We need more of you. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. How many of us could say we need more of God in our lives, correct? How many of us could say it's crazy out there right now? Like I'm, you're like, oh, I just dropped off my kid and I'm glad. I'm, I'm getting a respite for the next few minutes as my kid is in an incredible Fusion Kids ministry that is truly doing great things. And so we want to celebrate that. But we're jumping into this series called All In. And uh, we finished, if you're new with us, uh, we just finished a series called Get My Life Back. How do we get our lives back? We unpack some principles. So if you ever miss anything here, at Fusion Church, you can uh, log on to either the web, the app, or YouTube, and uh, go ahead, enjoy those uh, videos, get the podcast. Many of us are listening to the podcast, even going back to older messages. But today, in everything we talk about, I want you to kind of use the filter of time, the filter of talent. So my gift set, what am I good at, okay? Uh, For example, some of us might be great at hospitality, some of us are not. Some of us might be a people person, some of us might be more introverted, extra, I mean, all different, different talents, gift sets over here, and then treasure uh, the financial blessing that God has given. Every single one of us here today are blessed. I don't care what you think, you are blessed according to global standards simply by living in this country and living in the state of New Jersey. But one thing I found that as we've talked about, uh, you know, stories of faith here, you're going to hear it today, another incredible story of faith of a family here at Fusion Church. As I go back over the years, as I see what God's doing in Cumberland County, as we see the story of our Egg Harbor Township location that was the old uh, going out of business diamond furniture. How many of us remember that? Driving up and down Black Horse Pikes, like how many more times can they go out of business, correct? And then the next month they were going out of business again. And then they were going out of business again. And finally, they went out of business and we were able to buy uh, the Egg Harbor Township facility. All the stories of faith over at Summers Point back with uh, Pastor Steve Evans when they uh, bought that. Correct? It was called Gold's Gym. And then that, that kind of went down. And then it was called God's Gym because one of the letters fell off. And uh, you that are in the worship center at Summers Point, that used to be a swimming pool. And many times what I found, this is it, what I found is that we all, we go, yeah, that's amazing. I love what God's doing in your church. Not my church, it's His church, correct? I love the stories of this, but I can't see it for myself. That's why we're talking about all in. Because many of us can celebrate with what God's doing. Many of us can see the miracles in their life. When I share stories of what God's done in my life, I was just sharing with two men prior to the service. I said, God, I came to this country with 25 cents, a quarter in my pocket 
over 20 plus years ago. And I've seen God's faithfulness. And many people go, that's great for you, but I don't really see that in my life. That's great that I see it at Fusion Church, but I don't see it in my life. It's great that I see it in the students and the youth and and then the stories, but I don't see it in my life. Well, this series over the next two or three weeks, this is for you. This is for you because I want to believe God's best for your life. I want to believe everything that the Bible says right here that God can do it in your life. And, And I think, I think there's just a little bit of a shift. I think there's a little bit of a perspective change. How many of us need a perspective change, correct? The, okay, and, and there's a little bit of a challenge, correct? So I'm going to challenge you today. So if you need to curl up your toes, I'm going to challenge you a little bit today, okay? Please don't be offended. I love you. Hi, my name is Brendan. I love you, okay? I love you, okay? But I've got to challenge you because I'm a pastor and I've got to challenge you to take that next step in your time, talents, and treasures. And again, we are in the best season of what God is doing. It's the fall it's autumn. I despise pumpkin, okay? Like, I didn't grow up with pumpkin, and everything's pumpkin around here. My wife got me a pumpkin latte from Dunkin' Donuts. I'm like, that's nasty, honey, nasty, okay? But it is a great time for the church. Why? Because people are open to hearing about Jesus. People are open that are far from Jesus. People are open that are disconnected from church. People are open to being all in because they are missing something within their life. And that's why this uh, friends and family series, when you leave all of our locations today, you're going to get a pack of cards. This is not so you can help the recycling in the community, correct? Okay. The pack of cards is so you can pray and invest and invite people to be a part of our friends and family weekend on October 31st at all of our locations. It's going to be spectacular. And I promise you, I've got a great message. It's not going to be an awkward message. Have you ever been in church when the preacher preaches an awkward message or like bad day to bring a friend? Okay. It's going to be a great opportunity because again, people want to uh, just get everything that God has for their life. And so we're in this incredible season, but the question is, what am I missing? And what can I do to use these filters in my life so that I'm not hitting this glass season? As I look at scripture, it's not in your notes or on the app, but John chapter three, verse 16, it's so well known. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son, that whoever believes in him might have eternal life, that he won't perish and might have eternal life. You see, God went all in for us. God went all in in every aspect of his life. In fact, the whole Old Testament of the Bible for me is like the greatest story of God's love because he's trying to get to us over and over and he is trying everything. Have you ever tried anything and everything to figure something out? I mean, that's God. He's like, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? And eventually he's like, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to send my son, Jesus. And so as we talk about all in today, here's the big number one, correct? The big number one is this. Jesus went all in. Jesus went all in. If you got the Fusion app, you want to fill in the word Jesus right there. But Jesus went all in. Why? Because God went all in for us. And I want to propose that maybe there is something that you and I and me many times in my life I'm missing because I'm not all in with something in my life. I'm not all in. Maybe there's a time issue and I don't want to give that to God. Maybe there's a talent issue that I'm like, well, I I do this for business, but I, I can't bless the church with, you know, that talent that I have. Or maybe it's a financial issue. You're like, oh yeah, I'll give my time and I'll give my talent, but I ain't giving Jesus one dollar, you know? And honestly, maybe there's some church hurt. Like you've, maybe you've seen some junk in the church and you're like, yeah, I'll show up. I, 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 I'll spectate. I'll enjoy everything, but I, I, I'm not going all in. I'm not going to participate. And so today at any point, there's this QR code on our screens and you've got these know us without use. You can kind of, we've made it so easy. You can just take your phone, open it and, and, and click and, and sign up and be a part and, and, and choose to take that next step of being all in with everything that God has for you. You might go, man, I don't even know how my phone does a QR code. Then we've got team members in our foyers uh, at at these tables that would love to help you take next steps. But again, Jesus went all in. He is the greatest example that you and I can have within our lives. In fact, the scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 4 verse 18, it says, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, so he wasn't in a church, okay, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting uh, nets into the lake for they were fishermen. That was their occupation. The next portion of scripture says, come, follow me, Jesus said, 
and I will send you out to fish for people. That's the challenge. I will send you out to fish for people. Then it says, at once they left their nets and they followed him. They left their nets and they followed him. Jesus saw these men and he said, come, I want you to be a part of something. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James and Zebedee and his brother John. And they were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing the nets. Jesus called them and immediately they left the boat and their father followed. They left the boat. (laughs) Think about that. They left the boat. They left the father. And it says they followed him. They followed him. There was immediate obedience. Maybe you want to write that in your notes today. Immediate obedience. When Jesus speaks, I need to have immediate obedience. It's one of the greatest ways that I can be all in within my life. I think the challenge is, if I'm honest with you, many times Jesus speaks to me and I kind of want to ponder it. I want to wrestle with it. And then if I'm really honest, I get busy. Like I've got a busy life. I've got four kids. There's sports, there's school, there's this, there's that. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, he spoke it then, but was I immediately obedient? Many times in my life, I just want to say, God, if you speak it now, I want to make it immediately obedient within my life. I see God's greatest blessing in my life when I'm immediately obedient, immediate obedience. But that's uh, that portion of scripture there. If we kind of rewind and look at how Jesus started his ministry, it says in Luke chapter four, it says, Jesus was led by the spirit. This is verse one. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and he became hangry. Is that what it said? Hangry, correct? Have you ever been there? Hangry, correct? Like, I'm like, I'm done, man. I need some food right now, type of a thing. And, and what I love about this is Jesus has feelings. Let's be honest, correct? Like sometimes we're like, oh, Jesus is up there, but does he really know what I'm going through? Yes, he does. He knows about betrayal. He knows about disappointment. He knows about being the hero one week and being a traitor the next week. He's lost his friends to suicide, okay, Judas. He's lost good friends to betrayal like Peter that then came back and was trying to figure it out over and over. He lost his parents. The list goes on and on. Jesus understands what you and I are going through. That's why he went all in for us. So right in the beginning, what I love about this scripture is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he went into a season of fasting. I would find it very uh, interesting that um, us as a church have come out of a season of fasting. We committed 21 days to fasting and prayer. Do you know in that 21 days, there were miracles that happened in Fusion Church? People found healing. People found freedom. People found strength. People found vision. God was on the move. Why? Because we had committed ourselves to be all in, to maybe remove some things in our life. Well, that's Luke chapter 4, verse 1. If we go to the end of the 40 days, in verse 14, it says, And Jesus, after the 40 days, returned in power of the Spirit to Galilee. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And then it says, and a report about him went out through all of the surrounding country. What I love about that scripture, if we go back to that, go back to the word power. In the word power, it says over here, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. The word power, uh, original word is dunamis, Greek, uh, for dynamite. So if Jesus, after a time of going all in, fasting, okay, prayer, uh, temptation, in the power, in the dynamite of the Spirit, and then he returned to Galilee. M- many of us will show up tomorrow with your occupation. You might be a nurse or a teacher or a business owner uh, or a sales rep or a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, and the list goes on and on, correct? I don't want to offend anyone, but, but already there's a, maybe an apprehension that I'm going to show up tomorrow and I've got to deal with my boss. I've got to show up and deal with a project that you know, is, is on target or not on target. I've got to show up and deal with you know, all of the controversy going on. Am I doing this? Am I not doing this? Do I get that? Do I not get that? And I need answers. How many of us have ever prayed that? Like, God, speak to me. And then guess what? When we go all in in our time and our talents and our treasures, God begins to speak to us very clearly. In fact, Jesus said, I'm all in. I'm going to give I'm not going to even eat for 40 days and drink for 40 days. And I'm going to be all in to hear God. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God, the power of God comes upon Jesus. Can I encourage us today that when we go all in with Jesus and we receive the empowering of the Holy Spirit. In fact, a number of weeks ago, I uh, taught a two-part series called The Missing Ingredient that we are missing the ingredient of the Holy Spirit within our lives. 
That's why I want to challenge us today to use the filter of time. Use the filter of talents. Use the filter of treasure. What is that, God, that might not be there? Because that's why I'm hitting this glass ceiling within my life for that. Throughout Scripture, as I look, whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament, over and over, I see examples of people going all in. Examples of men and women going all in. Examples of young teenagers going all in. Young girls and young men going, God, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to risk everything. I think of the story of Elijah and Elisha, correct? Here is Elijah. He's getting older. He's looking for someone to bring on to his ministry. And here is Elisha plowing the field. And all of a sudden, Elijah comes by. And Elisha recognizes this is the man of God that I'm supposed to be with. And there is an encounter. There is a transformation that takes place. And literally, Elisha, plowing the field, leaves everything behind and says, God, I'm going all in with you. And we can see in the scripture the account of the miracles over and over. That's Elijah and Elisha. If we rewind a little bit and we look in the book of Genesis, okay, there's Abraham and Isaac. Abraham is called to sacrifice Isaac. We're not going to get into the details of that. If you're a younger Christian, like, that's real weird. At church, we're talking about child sacrifice right now. Okay, there's a whole lot that goes into it. But, but, but Abraham needed to trust God so that God could trust him. Maybe the glass ceiling that you and I might be kidding today in our time and our talents and our treasures is God is simply saying, hey, I need you to pass this test. I need you to be all in with me so that I can be all in with you. And you see, here's the beautiful aspect going back to point number one is Jesus went all in. The Bible says, for when we were still sinners, Christ gave his life. Isn't it incredible that when we still had a bad attitude, someone loved us. When we didn't have grace, oh, someone had grace for us. When we lacked strength in our life, there was someone else that had strength. In fact, the scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 58, it's, oh, sorry, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. it says, come to me, all you who labor, that's so many of us today, and are heavy laden. Can I just ask, how many of us are heavy laden today? How many of us are heavy laden, Cumberland County? How are you guys doing? How, how many of us are, man, you, you're heavy laden, heavy laden. Okay, come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, what's that word? Rest. What's that word? Rest. 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 And yet, some of us would believe, oh, if I worked harder at my job, I'm going to get some rest, because if I can retire, if I invest this, if I do this, and I don't want to say none of that is bad. I'm just saying that Jesus should be our number one priority. Jesus should be the one that we say, can I labor for you first, God? And trust you're going to take care of the rest? Could, could I give my heavy burdens to you first, trusting that you're going to give me rest? In fact, in John 6, 35, it says the following. It says, Jesus said to them, let's read this together. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Well, there's a lot of hungry people right now. Okay, and those people are hungry for position. Those people are hungry for prosperity. Those people are hungry for power. You might be working for a boss right now that's power hungry. You might be working for someone that's work harder, work harder, a slave driver. That they're believing that if they can climb the corporate ladder, that they will be better. See, the world teaches us that if I just grind harder, if I just get more YouTube followers and I become YouTube famous, can you imagine we have an identity like that, okay? Uh, if, if I just, you know, pl- practice harder, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm not saying at the simple level that those are bad things, but when it becomes obsessive and we are all in for the world, then we're missing out on God's best for our life. He wants to feel our thirst. Can, can I even... Take it over to relationships. Those of us that are in our freedom, 13 weeks of freedom, uh, connect groups right now. Uh, this week, correct, week uh, six, surrender. Come on. I got a men's group on Friday night and uh, we gathered together. Let me just say, I have never put on weight in our connect groups ever in like 20 
three years of doing this. This might be the first year that I'm going to put on weight because our Friday night men's group has so much food, it's overflowing. In fact, the one night we had a Thanksgiving dinner. I was like, bro, can I, t- can I come over to your house for Thanksgiving? Like I went home to my wife, Danielle. I was like, hey, I know where we're going for Thanksgiving, correct? Like, I know we're going over to Elvin's house for Thanksgiving, correct? I know, Elvin, you're listening to me. We're coming over to your house for Thanksgiving. The whole church is coming over to you, okay? And so then the context of that, like we're going to go all in. And, and, and if you're in our freedom group, we talked about surrender. Like we're going to surrender relationships. Maybe there's a relationship that you're going, yeah, it's taking away from being all in with God. I'm unequally yoked in this relationship. They don't believe what I believe. Every time I show up to church and I'm in this dating relationship, okay, that they're aggravated. Every time I give financially, they don't like it, okay? So, so, so we might be being asked to surrender because we're trying to drink from a, a relationship with a male or female or, or a relationship with a, a boss. If I just impress the boss, they're going to give me more. And we're thirsting in the wrong place. Does that make sense? We're eating in the wrong place. That's why the, 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 the principle of first fruits in the Bible, when I give first, see many times we talk about that in regards to finances, but when I give first of my time, when I give first of my talents, when I give first of my treasure, this principle is found, it's the, called the principle of first fruits, it's found throughout the Bible, Genesis all the way through Revelation. And when I give to the Lord first, He blesses the rest. But we get ourselves mixed up, we think, if I give to my boss first, then He'll take care of me. Your boss ain't going to take care of you, ever. Correct? Uh, Even in marriage, I can get myself caught up. If I give to my wife first, then she can do, no, 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 no. I need to give to God first. Even today, uh, I'm preaching, correct? I'm giving of the word. But but the the, the trick could be is, oh, because I'm preaching, then this is my time with God. I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning to spend time in the book of Psalms, which is in our soaping, Okay. And I was nourished. Anyone soaked this morning, okay? I was nourished in the Word of God. I mean, I was on fire. It's black outside. The sun hasn't even come up, and I'm getting excited for what God's doing. I'm texting out staff members. I'm like, I hope you're awake. It's 4.45. You know, it's early in the morning. Uh, Jason, Pastor Jason over in Cumberland County, I'm texting him real early in the morning. And I'm going, hey, dude, man, I'm fired up for what God is doing. And I'm dropping Scripture in there over and over. Why? Because I nourished myself first with the Lord, so then I can give today. But how many of us, we come in, we're like, I'm just glad I got here. (laughs) Find a seat. It better be good today. And worship, it better give me everything Jesus needs, you know? And you're like, I ain't ready for tomorrow. No, no, no. Come on. We are the head, not the tail. Come on. We are the beginning and not the end. God has blessed us and it overflows in our life, okay? And so as Christ followers, I think when we're not all in, then we're always kind of just, you know, running a little ragged. But when we go, God, I'm going to give you the first of my time, the first of my gift set. Can I just be honest? We give to everything else. We give our talents here and our talents here and yet the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God should be the most creative place ever. The kingdom of God should be the most financially accurate place ever. The kingdom of God should be the greatest place ever. And yet many times we give, 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 give. And that's why uh, one of the uh, values we talk about here at Fusion Church is we will push the chips to the middle. And someone many years ago when I wrote that down came to me and said, Pastor, I don't like that because, you know, Atlantic City, they, they just push the chips to the middle. And I said, exactly. I said, exactly. We will give In gambling, we will give in restaurants, we will push the chips to the middle, we will bet all of our income to believe that the house is going to pay out, and yet why do we not go all in with God? And so yes, I'm going to use the push the chips to the middle analogy exactly for that, believing that when we go all in with God, He is able to do that within our lives. Now, uh, again, I'm, I'm speaking, and you might have heard me say this over and over, and you're like, okay, pastor, like, but that's you. Like, you're the pastor of the church. You should be doing it. Well, let's listen to some stories, correct? Let's listen to Rich and Danielle. They are over at our Cumberland County location, and just an incredible part of the team over there, and they started driving from Vineland to Egg Harbor Township location, and they, then they heard what we were doing there. They're, they said, we're all in. We're all in with our time. We're all in with our talents. We're all in with our treasures. We're all in, and, uh, and when we started doing the services over there, they said, man, we're going to be a part of it. So listen to their story and be encouraged from this. Watch this. 
were searching and came up came upon Fusion Online. We went so long with being remote and I didn't realize how far away I was from a connection until that first message from Pastor Brendan. Just the authenticity and the, the honesty that it was like, it was almost like what I exactly what my soul needed to hear. So we knew when church opened back up again that we had to attend in person. And the next step for us was attending the Welcome Home class. From that experience and hearing about the vision at Fusion Church and really wanting to reach people far from Jesus, we knew we wanted to jump all in. And then the opportunity for the Cumberland County Church plant came. We started attending the, the core interest meetings. We were being trained, we were meeting new people, all different walks of life, all different testimonies, everyone trying to model them, their heart after Jesus. Uh, learning as, I, as I'm getting older, uh, connection is so important. Having the opportunity to just jump in and serve for the right reasons and wanna be a part of something you know, bigger than me, bigger than us, uh, and really just to grow God's kingdom. It, again, it was one of those moments where God just said, go ahead and jump in. So there's a lot of people that are coming through the doors and they all have a different story. There's a lot of people with church hurt and rejection. Mm -hmm. And we have not only the opportunity, but the privilege to love on them and to welcome them with open arms. I know for me, in my journey, whenever I would see folks volunteer, I always felt like, Oh, they have their stuff together and I don't. I'm just this mess and you know, it's Jesus has, you know, shown me over some time that no, everybody's broken and we have our stuff and it's we're serving because that's where our hearts are. And I think um, for people that might be kinda on the fence or uh, just struggling with some things and it's okay to talk about it out loud and really, you know, people that are serving aren't you know, we're certainly not better than anybody by any stretch of the imagination. It's, they, people need to know it's okay coming and serving because you know that's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus called us to serve. And one of the crucial things about being part of a dream team is our hearts are so in tune with what Jesus is doing in the community and then with the other members. And I just think that's just so special. And any time we can just give back and, and, and be bigger um, than ourselves and do something for other people is, you know, I think you put Jesus on display. That's probably the most tangible way to do it, especially with, you know, the pace of the world today and how fast it is. And it's, you know, more, 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 me, me, me. And it's, that's not what this life is. And it's, it's beautifully refreshing. I love that. Come on, let's uh, celebrate. What a powerful testimony. That's good preaching, correct? Like, that is good preaching right there. In fact, we were looking at the uh, video editing on, uh, on Thursday, and I was like, they don't even know what I'm speaking about. And so thank you. Thank you, Rich and Danielle, for uh, setting up this next scripture found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, because number two is what's stopping you. So Matthew 16, 24, it says, And Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What shall a man give in his return for his soul? Church? That scripture is such a time or a sign of the times where people are giving their souls for everything else except living for the purpose of what Jesus is doing in their lives. So again, number two, what's stopping you? What's stopping you today from going all in? Listen, it's you and me that choose to go all in. We're not about coercion here, but I'm simply about seeing you fulfill the destiny and purpose that God has given you. Seeing you at your best, seeing you at God's best for your life. And I know there's a lot of junk in our lives that holds us back. Rich and Danielle talk briefly about church hurt, correct? You're like, uh-uh, 
I'm not getting involved because of where I've been. Well, then you need to go through our freedom because that's the lie of hell that's holding you back. Some of us are like, nope, I'm not participating financially in the church. I'd rather be a spectator than a participator. That's the lie of hell that is stopping you from participating in the greatest investment of all time. That's the kingdom of God. Because many of us have participated financially. There are children's lives that are absolutely changed because we're all in for what God is doing. And we can share that over and over. So again, what, what's stopping us? And here at Fusion, we try and make it really easy, correct? A QR code that you scan with your phone or go up there and go, hey, here are some places, some easy ins, correct? It's like an off-ramp to a highway. We, we don't want to make it complicated. I'd never experienced jug handles off of highways in my whole life until I moved to New Jersey. And all of a sudden, I'm like, where's the exit? Oh, it's on the opposite side of the road, okay? Hello, Mr. Traffic. Then, oh, I've got to get in a jug hand. So I've got to go past the street, get around, and I, I'm not mocking the engineers that did that, please. There must have been some reason why they did that. Get in, a, get in a jug handle, go around, and then finally get back to where I'm going. And like, no, now I've got to cross the street. This is overly complicated. I do not want to be them, like the DOT, okay? I want to make it very easy for us to step in and be a part of what God's doing. Very easy to step in and be a part to get off a simple off-ramp and onto what God is doing. God, what are you speaking to us today? So again, what, what's stopping you? Because again, if we go back to Matthew chapter 16, verse 25, verse 25 says, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The greatest thing that I can do today is to surrender, to say, God, I, I wanna give you the first of my time. I want to give you the first of my gift set. Again, I'm bragging on this, this uh, family that makes this Thanksgiving meal for our men's group on Friday night. But there are men in our group that are, that, that are hard laborers. They're working up in Philadelphia and they're leading their businesses and they're doing construction and they're doing sales. And these men come in at seven o'clock on a Friday night and they've grinded the whole week. And listen, I'm not that good at hospitality. I'll give you a few snacks, correct? But man, when they come in and they can eat a ham and come on some collard greens, someone and some mashed potatoes. And I'm like, woo, baby, this is getting good right up here. That gift is a blessing in that season. That's what Jesus is calling the church to do. Would you come together? But see, as I thought about that, A is this, correct, of what's stopping you. Is number one, I've got to deny myself. Often, Brendan, I'm my worst enemy, correct? I'm the one that needs to surrender my pride. I'm the one that needs to surrender my selfishness. I need to deny myself and say, Jesus, would you speak to me today? Would you give me clear direction? The second thing is I've got to take up the cross. I've got to take up the cross. Now, I use the word the over here, but in the scripture, it's take up his cross. Okay? Take up the cross of Jesus. Take up my cross. I've got to make it personal. Because if we go, go back to point number one, Jesus went all in for me. Because why? The cross gave me life and abundant life. But the cross allowed Jesus to rise again. See, we believe in a resurrected Jesus. I don't believe in a dead God. I believe in a God that's alive today that wants to speak into me and wants to heal me and give me vision and give me insight and strength and understanding. I'm not here to pray to a dead God. I pray to an alive God. I pray to a God that gives me faith, faith that is the substance of things hoped for and the faith of evidence that is unseen. That is the God that speaks into me. So I've got to deny myself. I've got to take up the cross that Jesus gives me and see he was follow Jesus. I've got to follow Jesus. Listen, there are a lot of other demigods in this world. There are politicians that are trying to be gods. There are news stations that are trying to play God. There are churches that are trying to play God and they've got no God in them. I want to follow Jesus. Because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for, through me. And so today, church, come on. Tomorrow, let's get the power of Jesus through the Holy Spirit when you show up at your job. Let's get the power of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis, dynamite power throughout this week. Access God, because God, I'm going to be all in with my time. I'm going to be all in with my talents, and I'm going to be all in with my treasure. Because again, Matthew 16, 25 says this, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life will find it for my sake. Listen, I don't want to lose my life. I want to find it. That is the greatest privilege that you and I have. 
Come on, let's stand to our feet today. And as we're standing to our feet, maybe here's the question that you need to ask yourself today. What is the Holy Spirit saying to me? I think the Holy Spirit's speaking to every one of us. And why? Because He's way more important than I am today. That's why He is the leader of this church. So well, what's the Holy Spirit? What's a practical thing the Spirit of God is saying to so literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of us gathered in many, many different rooms of the house today? What's the Spirit of God saying? Number two, in what areas of your time, talents, or treasure do you feel that you're holding back? Listen, uh, I'm the pastor of the church, but, but I pastor pastors around this country, and God is challenging me in greater ways to deny myself, greater ways to pick up His cross, greater ways to follow Jesus in ministering to churches in, in, in a greater way. So He's speaking to me in time, talents, and treasure in these areas. And then lastly, what are some practical ways? Come on, let's get practical. Let's get practical. What are some practical ways you can choose to die daily and pick up your cross? One of the greatest ways is choosing to sign up on a team. One of the greatest ways is choosing to get connected in our soaping, our scripture observation, application, and prayer that we do at a daily basis here at Fusion Church. So let me pray a blessing. Father, right now, I ask that the power of the Holy Spirit fall upon your children. Father, I ask that you release your spirit, your dynamite, powerful spirit of God to come and fill us as we deny ourselves, as we humble ourselves, God. Lord, that you would move in a supernatural, mighty way. God, you know the needs of your church in all of these locations. God, you know people that are crying out to you. You know some of us, God, that are hurt and wounded. I pray you are the God of healing. Would you come right now and fill us with your love and your mercy. And we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen.